So hello and welcome to another episode of Turiya Talk Season 8. Uh, I'm Simbul Khan and today we have an honorable guest, Natalia Antakulova, with us. She's not just a true histo- art historian and a gallerist, but also a great mother and inspirational woman. And as we say, a true art historian is not the one who is just inspired, but the one who inspires others. With that note, a warm welcome to our guest, Hello. Thank you so much for inviting me and uh, I hope we will get some knowledge about art, art collecting. Okay. And Natalia is the founder and owner of uh, Andakulva Gallery. She was born and raised in Uzbekistan. Art is her passion. She established the Andakulva Gallery in Dubai way back in 2012. Her gallery promotes Central Asia artists drawn from Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyz Republic, Kazakhstan, and Turkmenistan. And the Kulwa Gallery is to cultivate a dialogue between Central Asia and Middle East. By positioning the art of Central Asia into the artist hub of Middle East, her collection includes an electric mix of modern and contemporary artwork. For the past nine years, she has joined around 40 exhibitions and participated in numerous arts events inside and outside UAE. Right. Let's begin the question and answer round with you and small interview. With pleasure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. Tell us more about you and your journey of changing your passion into your career. And how do you manage your personal and professional time and life as well? My journey is quite interesting. Uh, my first degree is uh, mass and physics and I have a master degree in IT. So it's uh, completely different. And when I had my master's, I understood uh, this is uh, not my passion and I want to spend time uh, in my life to do something very important and uh, what is also pleasing me. So uh, that's why I cho- changed my uh, life <laughs> uh, and choose to, uh, to be an art uh, historian. Uh, so I got the second degree in St. Petersburg, Imperial Academy of Art. As well, I study in Christie's. Uh, I, I had a course, uh, Art Business Success. And uh, I opened a gallery in 2012, which is uh, successfully working already nine years. And galleries focus uh, on Central Asian art. It's very specific, so we choose uh, our niche. And uh, yeah, um, I'm enjoying the to be in art world. Yeah. So it's like a really wonderful journey, ma'am, till now. Yeah. Um, so as we say, like art is not what you see, but what you make others see. So being an art historian, ma'am, what is your opinion on this statement? Uh, to be an art historian, um, it's an incredible uh, way because uh, the art history, including the all history in the world, including archaeology, history, and uh, through art, we can get the knowledge about uh, different culture, different tradition. Uh, at the same time, we can enjoy the artwork at home and uh, or office, for example, and uh, have our, our environment much better. Okay, so many people say that there's a conceptual connection between art and aesthetics. So what, according to you, is the uh, conceptual connection between the art and aesthetics? I think that each artwork speaks with the the person uh, through our um, education, through our experience in life. And the concept of the each artwork or energy we can feel differently. That's why for the for the different people and different countries, uh, the, the the clients collectors prefer different artworks. I never seen that, uh, for example, particular one uh, collection of the artist. The the artworks can be chosen completely different. So. Uh, as I said, like uh, the concept of the art uh, speaks with the different people differently. Yeah. 
um, as we can see behind you is a really beautiful art piece so what does your artwork say about the culture in which it was produced and what are the values and beliefs of the culture in which your artwork was made ma'am uh, behind uh, me, this is artwork by Pakhadir Jalal. I can show you, which calls uh, Double Spiral. And uh, it's about the duality. And also, you know, in Feng Shui, it's uh, yin and yang, the energy of uh, woman and man, and a lot of um, symbols. Because Bahadir Jalal, uh, one of the most renowned artists uh, in Uzbekistan, uh, people call him the living legend, and um, he had exhibition worldwide, uh, his artworks uh, uh, in the museums, and uh, we're really proud to present him in the gallery. Uh, the, he, he's mostly working in the monumental artworks he created in murals in different countries, in Italy, in India. As well, he created the old banknotes in Uzbekistan uh, when Uzbekistan became an independent country. And uh, nominee of 500 is in the British Museum as a uh, best design. So, and the um, uh, value of uh, Bahadir Jalal artworks that start from the 5,000 up to 30,000. So, particularly this piece is $9,500, uh, which is uh, quite fair price for the such a great artist i can say yeah so ma'am for our viewers is there any piece of advice for the budding art historians or the gallerist and what are the things we should consider ma'am while buying an art piece the things should that we should keep in our mind the first of all when uh, when you plan to start your art collection um this uh, it's very important to to get your like a due diligence, I can say, or to, to make the, your research about the artist what you're purchasing, uh, or to think about the concept about all collection. And when I say art collection, many people think that it's hundred pieces uh, of the artworks, but it can be uh, through the life uh, ten or fifteen pieces, which. Um, uh, carry the important uh, idea or somehow connected to you. Uh, so you can buy one or two pieces per year or per two years. And um, but before that, you, you need to, to make the research of the artist where exactly he was exhibited uh, during his life. Uh, if he attended the any uh, art fairs or biennales. Uh, important uh, if the artist uh, was in a museum, it's also kind of the mark uh, which is uh, making the importance of artists. And of course, the prices also matter. Nowadays, the art is more transparent. And uh, while you're Googling the artist, you can understand and find the prices through the auctions. Uh, or if the artist ever placed uh, himself in any platforms, uh, so you're going to see the pricing of this particular artist. This is the important steps. My suggestion to, to purchase artworks through the galleries. Why it's important? Because uh, usually the gallery is selecting the best pieces from the artist and already have the spe special uh, rates. Because, uh, you know, sometimes artists can create the price, yeah? I want my piece to, co it costs like one million, but uh, everything have the price. And according to the art market, the price of the artwork uh, is uh, very important. And uh, it's including the several steps, as I said, uh, the bio or CV of the artist. Uh, so he, at least uh, he should have, every year uh, exhibition, like solo exhibition. Uh, better if the artist working through the galleries, not himself, because it's, uh, it's like a movie on to sell the artworks through the studio. So uh, we, we're living in the time when the 
specialist is very important. For example, if it's art world, the art specialist can suggest you uh, what to buy and uh, how much it might cost. Because um, like uh, if, if you need to create website, you will go to the website specialist. In the art is also, it's important to check with the art historian because uh, in the artwork this is important the composition colors uh, who's and uh, also the provenance and um, also in collecting i would suggest to buy the living artist because uh, it's uh, important uh, because you are supporting the artist through his his career also you can check uh, the way how the art is growing uh, where he's exhibiting and you can always ask him uh, for example if you have particular artworks what was about or like uh, you can make sure that this is um, uh, real artworks it's not fake so uh, it's uh, many benefits if the artist is living okay that's a great piece of knowledge for us ma'am uh, so so I would like to ask you, ma'am, that what are your opinion about the digital era right now in which we are living, like the marketing and the digital marketing? Does it have any contribution to the economy or to the art world? Of course. Um, for the last, uh, I could say, 30 years, the art is changing towards the digital because before that it was video art uh like uh, like you know the artist B bill viola he was one of the first video artists and uh, at the beginning people didn't understand how to collect the video art but nowadays uh, there is a spe specific uh, uh sp specific line in art or, which calls video art also digital, it can be animation. Uh, now we enter the new world, it's uh, called NFT, non-tangible token. And it's also taking the big part in art world. And uh, everybody wants to, uh, who, who knows uh, the cryptocurrency, want to buy some artworks. And now we're also having uh, exhibition together with the Moro Collective. Uh, we represent Bahadir Jalal, the artist uh, who, like behind me. Uh, we create the uh, animated uh, NFT, non, uh, the NFT artworks, uh, which you can find in our uh, virtual tour. Now we having on our website the virtual tour, which is also important. And uh, due the situation of the pandemic, the the, the COVID situation also, a lot of art galleries went to the virtual galleries. Uh, so it doesn't matter where are you located, you can visit the gallery, you can see the pieces, you can zoom the artworks, or like you can visit the museum nowadays. So I think uh, it's, it's very important. And uh, as well, there is new uh, reality, which calls Agmentum reality. It's additional reality when, for example, you go to the museum and you can place your laptop or computer and you can see in front of you some uh, additional reality, like some, some objects, which is also very interesting. And uh, we, we have to accept that uh, new virtual reality, augmentum reality, um, NFT is uh, more and more involved in our life. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting way and we're moving towards this direction because even uh, like three months back, uh, it was uh, an, on NFT sold the building uh, for $500,000, which is uh, mm -hmm. existing only in uh, virtual reality. So, and uh, as well, the Christie's uh, sold the one of the most expensive uh, NFT artworks. Um, so in two words, I will explain how the NFT is working. NFT, it's a JPEG format file, which you can buy and um, you can uh, show in some lead or screen or your personal computer, but you cannot print it out 
So literally you purchasing GPAC format file. So this is the non-refundable token, which you can resell with some profit, uh, but you cannot print it out. Yeah. Completely agreed by your points. So coming to the last question of this session, what are your opinions about Turia Communications and Turia Talks? I think it's an amazing platform uh, for the people from the different field, which can uh, share the knowledge uh, with, the, with the world, with the people who, uh, uh, who, who can see the YouTube. And um, I think it's incredible that nowadays uh, we can uh, be connected uh, to, to get an idea about different uh, subjects uh, through Turia Talk. And uh, I'm very thankful to be part of it. So uh, I'm, I'm really pleased. Thank you so much. And on that point, we will bring this beautiful and informative session to a close. This episode with Natalia has been very knowledgeable and insightful. I hope every viewer enjoyed today's show. Thank you so much for finding time to come and join us for this session. Till then, stay safe and healthy. And don't forget to subscribe and like and share to Turia Talks. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.